Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of VGC Off The Record. It's turned into a therapy session just before we started actually. Not because of E3 though, because for many other reasons in life. But E3 is actually a therapy session for many of us because video games are good. Video games are awesome. Today we're going to go through all the conferences and try and pick out our little kind of award winners in some ways. We're going to go individually through our biggest disappointments, our games of the show, missing in action games and our most surprising reveal. And of course I can't do it on my own. I'm joined by some wonderful guests. We've got the tired old hack himself, Chris Gullin. How are you doing, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm um, uh, appropriately tired because <laughs> now that E3 is finished, <laughs> so that's quite good. But did, other than that, did E3 happen if you're not even knackered? Isn't that the point? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, E3, what? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm yeah. just, I'm just, yeah, generally tired. But no, all good. Oh good. We've got the big boss man himself, uh, the editor in chief of VGC, Mr. Tired Andy Robinson. <laughs> tired old hack. Tired, tired old hack. We're all tired old hacks today. And of course, uh, Dringo from uh, the man behind the numbers over at Games Two Biz. How you doing, man? You right? Yeah, I'm really good. I'm also. I'm actually feeling less tired at the minute. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I think it's because my E three is not supposed to be done when you've got kids. Like, it's mm. absolutely not supposed. To, you're not supposed to go to bed at two, three in the morning and then get up at five. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be. But uh, uh, but I, I'm feeling what? quite good today. Yeah, what can we do to make uh, um, E3 on UK time? Can someone sort that out, please? Actually, yeah. it was relatively reasonable times this year, wasn't it, for what I can remember? It, it felt was reasonable. reasonable times this year, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, Sony Sony was the one who used to have their conference at like 2 in the morning UK. Yeah. I mean, us usually I'm, I'm over there, but even that is a pain in the ass because I think I was saying this to Chris the other day, I went to the infamous 2006 Ridge Racer press conference. <laughs> Um, and that was at like 2 a.m. UK time. It was in like the Sony Pictures lot. I just remember just fighting, like trying to stay awake while they showed that stupid Africa game, you know, with a rhino <laughs> over the years. Like, you know, it just came out and his ears just sort of went. Um, what, else, what else was on that? That was awful. They had the, the flying game. I can't remember. Real time, they were, they were, real time weapon off, change. And they were showing off the, the uh, motion controls for the first time in the six axis, and the guys were just going like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old days. Based on actual historical battles, it really <laughs> happened. There's a giant crab. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Love the it. giant crack? Yeah, it's obviously, you know, a, a big event in human history. Um, He's weak point for massive damage. <laughs> uh, that was an incredible year in general, though, but that was the highlight, low light. What's your, what's, what's your, what's your favourite ever E3? I'm going to put that out to anyone. I'm just genuinely curious, really. Is it probably that one? Probably. Um, for, for a number of reasons, because I'd, I'd just kind of joined the gig at that point. So it was my first E3 covering it. Uh, and Nintendo were properly announcing the Wii and stuff like that. And so for me... It was 2006, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that was like mm -hmm. a massive one for me. It was like, um, I'd, I'd literally joined like a week or two earlier. And suddenly you're, you're seeing like the future. This is the stuff you're going to be covering. So for me, that was like the big deal. But um, there have been some absolute shiters as well. <laughs> they connect. The, when they've announced Connect and they showed that really weird, creepy Milo and Kate game where the entire game is talked to a child that isn't yours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit of a favorite. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't make any dark jokes, Stephen. Don't make any dark jokes, Stephen. Um, no, no. It's really, it's, it's, you're tempting me today, given the mood I'm in. Um, <laughs> this is obviously our big discussion about E3. Of course, this is VGC off the record, where every week we try and deliver you guys the most considered informative takes and all the big stories from the world of video games. And of course, this week it's all about E3. And if you like this as well, you can catch us usually on a Friday afternoon, but you know, it's Wednesday. We're breaking the rules. It's E3 week. Who really cares? Uh, so you can subscribe to us over on our YouTube channel or you can go and follow us over on all the major podcast providers uh, but today of course we're chatting about e3 and as i mentioned at the top of the show we're going to go through i'm uh, going to go through a round table and talk about um our big, big big takes basically from e3 in terms of surprising reveal biggest disappointment game of the show missing in action and actually i want to answer the question as well uh because of mr chris string uh he said this was going to be a little bit better than we thought it was going to be the e3 i remember that promise a week ago um did he look to that did did, did, did dringo Go on. Depended on your expectations. Like yeah. I said, so any, anyone, anyone who said that it wasn't as good as they were expecting clearly wasn't around last year. You know, <laughs> it, there was actual stuff announced. There was actual stuff that was excited about. I mean, yeah. I'll give compare this weekend to all of last summer, and this weekend still wins. Yeah, I mean, obviously we're still under the effect of the pandemic, but there was exciting stuff announced. It felt like more like an event again this year, where, where there was yeah, like, you know, there was the week where things were happening instead of it just being 
strung out over four months. Um, it was more exciting in that respect. I think you're off the hook in this one, Dringo. Genuinely, I thought it was a good show. Yeah. Um, overall, I mean, there was some disappointing <laughs> shows, which we'll get to, I'm sure, but there was plenty of good games announced, and that's pretty much all you can ask for, really, isn't it? There was plenty of stories as well. Um, lots of surprises, um, which is always exactly what you want. Um, this is where we're going to start, of course. Uh, we're going to start, uh, we're going to go round the table. We're going to go clockwise, depending on which way I ed- edited this. I'm going to have to keep it this way now, because I've said clockwise on the editor. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go <laughs> clockwise round now. Um, and what, I'll, what I'll do, I'll just confuse it and mix it around. We're going to start um, uh, with Chris. Uh, what was your most surprising reveal from this E3 2021 conference? I'm going to go left field here just to give everyone else a chance and say the the, the, the other ones. But for me, legitimately, the, the one thing that made me go, oh, Jesus, was Top Gun in Flight Simulator. Because I, 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 was, I, was, looking, I was looking forward to Flight Simulator anyway, because I kind of knew it was coming in the summer. And I was thinking, Flight Simulator is coming. What's the big announcement is going to be when it's coming? You say July. Oh, okay. Because that's what I'm genuinely looking forward to play because I can't be bothered setting it up on my PC, but I'll happily sit and play it on my Series X. And it was uh, Flight Simulator. Oh, that's quite good. And then the screen goes dark and it goes, boom, does the top gun get taken? I said, oh, wait a minute. And then, oh, Do you what? what? I'm well I have never that. watched Top Gun. Yeah. Oh no, you're, you're, you're missing. It's, it's it's not it's not amazing. It's but, not, I'm not I'm not I'm not a massive fan of it, but just the fact, just the idea of flight simulator, but with action in it is just I'm well up for that. I mean, everyone knows Maverick as well. Everyone knows all about it. That's the thing, and everyone knows all the music and all that kind of stuff. Some of things, yeah. I don't think you have to see the film to know it. You know, it's one of those things where it's just part of popular culture, anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Um, big shout though. Any other surprises mm. for you? Oh, no, actually, not allowed to nab them. We'll go back around actually. If anyone yeah, yeah, well, out, well, you can well, find well, them at well, the well, end. Yeah. Um, Andy. It's your turn in the spotlight. It's uh, Advance Wars. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. just purely based on I'm surprised it exists. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I love ex- Advance Wars, just like a, a um, you know, kind of most uh, people of a certain age do. But the game released 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, and they've not done anything with it apart from that really weird GameCube spin off. Um, and. If, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed that they've pulled it out. It raises another question, by the way. Um, Nintendo's announcements were really surprising, but also there was a kind of a lack of uh, really big stuff, I think. Like, mm-hmm. and, and then when you really look into it, because yeah. it's kind of it's emerged in the 24 hours since that obviously, uh, I mean, obviously Metroid is Mercury Steam, um, but they didn't explicitly announce that until Treehouse afterwards. Yeah. And uh, it, um, um way forward is working on advanced wars yeah so that's like at least yeah. two of the games there that yeah. aren't what's, nintendo what's the, yeah, it is, it is kind of crazy it? isn't it how like nintendo's japanese studio seems to have just utterly collapsed under remote working <laughs> like which is which is not surprising right i mean if you've got an, a, a, a japanese analyst in here they point out like the size of living spaces in japan and the lack of hardware at home etc cetera, etc cetera. um but it is quite startling yeah yeah. I mean, also, I think Nintendo as well have been, you know, they've been taken, the, the games, these games, ta- games take so long to make these days. And because Nintendo always yeah. had the DS and the handheld games, which were quite quicker to produce, we're now in a situation where they, you know, you know, Zelda taking five, six years to make, isn't that uncommon for any other company for a game of that scale and scope and, and complexity? It, so I think they've they def- definitely been impacted by COVID, there's no doubt. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting. I was, I noted that this year's uh, lineup for uh, for Switch seems it's good. If you if there'll be something for everybody in it, but yeah. next year is when the blockbusters are due, right? With the Splatoon and the, and the Zelda and the Pokemon. You know, those are the ones where you're looking at. Even the Pokemon, uh, I don't know it's not Nintendo, but the, the Diamond and Pearl remakes aren't being made by Game Freak, right? So it's the, you're starting mm. to see them. Are they not? They're being they're um, uh... yeah. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, it's been it's been outsourced. <laughs> the Game Freak are making that. So, uh, are there any actual Nintendo games coming out this year? <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's not derail the conversation. Let's not derail it because we're, we're we're starting to uh, go to between categories here. Is what I'm gonna say. Uh, so, advanced. What I'll say is, Advance Wars. Is it worth sixty quid? You know, because uh, if I mean it's Nintendo, isn't it? I guess I, I would. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe yeah, this, is it sixty a bit, quid. I think it's going to be full price. Yeah. Yes, uh, which yeah, is that, um, that's, that takes the piss a little bit. I think. That, that was my opinion as well. But, um, you know, some people disagree online, actually, because I just Chris next to me. So, you know, fair enough. Uh, Dringo, your most surprising reveal. It's not too dissimilar to Chris's, actually. It's the Pirates of the Caribbean Sea. I knew you'd say that. Um, <laughs> I knew you'd say it. Because it, it genuinely, well, I'm, I'm, starts, I'm, you know, Andy knows this. I'm really close to the studio rare. I know a lot of people there. And I had no idea. Like, that completely mm. made me go, 
what? And I actually, when it first appeared and he had the bone and the dog, and I, and I just played Ratchet and Clank, by the way, and there's a similar scene in Ratchet and Clank with the bone and the dog, and I'm like, everyone just ripping off Pirates of the Caribbean. And then, it, mm. no, no, it is Pirates of the Caribbean. And I um, I was, I'm actually really excited about it. Like, I, I've, I've, it's one of my most exciting things that I saw at the show um, as a big fan of Sea of Thieves. So um, that, I mean, I just didn't see it coming. Um, mm. Almost everything else I sort of, I'm not that surprised by. Um, I thought perhaps it was time for an Advance Wars to come back, particularly with, I mean, it was still a surprise, but particularly with Fire Emblem being so successful, that's how I managed to find a second wind. I kind of thought maybe it was time to give something else a shot. But um, that I wonder like... how that came about. Because, um, I, I mean, I hear all the time about various studios who are just pitching stuff to Nintendo. You know, like they'll literally just make a demo and go, here you go, Nintendo, let us make this. And then Nintendo tells them to go away. Um, <laughs> so I, I do wonder how that came about. It'd be really interesting if WayForward just kind of put that together. And they went, oh, okay. Mm. Do you know what? We've delayed all our stuff for two years. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that. Mm. Yeah. Which well, is probably the, what happened. The Velan Studio, you know, um, the Mario Kart home tour game last year. Yes, that's it, that's it, what they did, right? Yeah, they didn't have a, it wasn't a Mario Kart game. They just had a they had a weird AR kart racing thing, and Nintendo saw it and said, stick Mario in it, we'll take it. Uh, and uh, and that's and pretty that's, much what they usually do. <laughs> yeah, stick Mario in it, we'll take it. <laughs> oh, and Tony, I've got this idea for this brand new IP. Stick Mario in it, we'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> it's what they had to do with. That's what I did with uh, RC Pro Am, isn't it? On the N sixty four, they stuck Diddy yeah. Kong in it because Banjo Kazooie was a uh, uh, <laughs> wasn't right, going to yeah. make Christmas. Um, yeah. it's love, love that. <laughs> Can they bring back Diddy Kong Racing? Just please, somewhat. It's never going to happen. Well, they did on the DS, like, didn't they? So yeah. theoretically, theoretically, they could change the elephant's voice, which was, uh, which as, was an, as an aside. I was once <laughs> I was once told the story of of uh, of that delay, that Banjo Kazooie delay. I, I'm guessing it was 1998, something like that. So Sick. E3, E3 1998, um, I, I've, I, they, <laughs> apparently the dev team had a meeting with uh, like Nintendo's top brass and Nintendo told them very explicitly how important it was that the game was Howard ready. Lincoln did it, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to name him, but since you have. Uh, yeah, honestly, I, I, did a po- I did a podcast. It was a long Grant. time ago, to be fair. <laughs> I did a podcast with Marco who told this story. <laughs> Just, just two days. No one ago, listens but... to your podcast stream. No, I'm just saying you we don't have, have literally to go... hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of yeah, viewers. Realise what podcast. Oh. <laughs> no, but you don't. Have, basically, uh, you don't have to hide behind names. It's like it's in the public domain. But, uh, so basically, um, Howard Lincoln, who was the um, head of Nintendo America at the time, was telling them very explicitly how important, like a teacher dressing down the students, how important <laughs> it was that Banjo Kazooie was ready for that Christmas. And uh, they already knew in the room there's no chance this is making Christmas. And they flew back to the UK and just sort of like sent him an email. By the way, it's not coming out. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, John, one person right, on that. One person, hell of a game. One person, no, was, on that, one person on that E3 trip um, was so sick, as in like, felt physically sick after that meeting. He didn't come out of his room after that. <laughs> it was, uh, it's like so terrible. Because he'd spent, I mean, Nintendo had spent 20 million booking advertising for it. Um, and that was the thing, and that was the problem. But that's why Diddy Kong Racing became. That's how that was born. Uh, well, you know, it was, it was oh, every cloud has a silver lining for them because it was a wonderful game. So uh, genuinely, mm. um, can I be liberal, liberal with the, the use of the phrase "most surprising reveal"? Because I, I want to actually like to, there, there was some surprising reveals. I was going to say WarioWare because that genuinely surprised me and things like that. And Advance Wars has already been taken. I actually going to say Guardians of the Galaxy, not because I knew it was coming, because it looked better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it'd be a bit. I, agree, yeah. I honestly, I thought it looked really genuinely fun. And after Marvel's Avengers, which I thought <laughs> looked a bit. It just didn't look fun it never looked it never kind of landed it never you know all the gameplay trailers it never kind of it never seemed to connect with anyone and the reaction uh, from my own personal reaction online to guardians of the galaxy was this game seems to capture the spirit of the city of the films really really mm. well it looks fun and even though the characters are not perfect they seem to have their own kind of relative personality that seems to fit the tone of the game and even the decisions to have like the little kind of like dialogue choices with the you know the tiny rpg elements and that kind of stuff i was like mm, you know what yeah but it's really good and, I, and I, idos montreal I, I are good. good right like they are a developer yeah. pedigree. Uh, I was saying it while we were watching it together as a team. Like this game, you can pretty much be confident it's going to be at least yeah. good. Yeah, at least yeah. a seven out of ten. You know, at least probably like Jedi Fallen Order kind of quality. You know, it's obviously a different game to that, but I, and that was a good game. No, not a classic, but a good game. And mm-hmm. yeah, to me, that was um, I wasn't expecting much from it. I'd obviously heard. Yeah, all I the totally agree. Yeah, I'll play that. If it was a, if yeah. it was an Avengers type, I would be you know turning my nose at that. But I'll definitely play that game. 
I love that all four of us gave surprise reveals and nobody's even mentioned Metroid yet. Like, no, because <laughs> I was. Most, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure on this exact podcast, twice I said I think there's going to be a Metroid game. Yeah, but it wasn't going to be Metroid Dread, though. Was it? I mean, I was no. That's what I was told for a while. Like I was expecting a 2D Metroid to turn up. I'm pretty sure on this podcast I called it, especially around. I mean, obviously we were we were expecting um, the Switch Switch Pro to turn up by now, right? I mean, yeah. clearly they've they've kind of juggled that around, but it's like the conversation we were having weeks ago uh, about how they they kind of usually position their most core core games around these hardware revisions, mm. and you don't get more ultra core than a two D Metroid, right? But yeah. that's not yeah. great. That's not a great demonstration of the. If you're going to sit there on a no, show, it, is, it isn't. Switch, it isn't. No, it isn't. Metroid but I mean, clearly, again, as we've established. No Japan can't make any bloody games from their bedrooms. So <laughs> this is what they got. They're either demonstrating it with Advance Wars or or, maybe, or, or push it into Q1 or, and Pokemon or whatever the I might yeah, I, can feel like put it, I get I get the feeling they'll put it back now because none of those games look like pro no. caliber games. I get the feeling they'll put it back to Was it- sometime next year. Am I being selfish and being slightly underwhelmed by the Metroid reveal? Simply because I feel like it could just look better. And I know it's not uh, a it 2D looks, It looks great, man. No, but I looked. Look yeah, at I the, agreed the with place, you. I'm a fan. I agreed with you. But and then oh, I watched like, the, um, the Treehouse stream afterwards. Yeah. The Treehouse oh, okay, stream. I only saw the trailer. Lot more detail. Because oh, I was actually yeah. having this conversation with you, Dringo, wasn't I? I was like, it looks like a little bit rough, but I'd only seen the trailer at that point. And then I went and watched it for 30 minutes or whatever. They played afterwards. And actually, it was really nice. Yeah, but I was that... based off of things like Replaced and Somerville, you know, which have a beautiful, oh, yeah, beautiful that game art style. Amazing. Amazing. They Replaced look gorgeous, amazing. and I, I like. I just, I guess, I guess, I wish it had that because because it, it's possible, in my opinion. You know, I just, I guess, I wish it was a little bit more, just because like breathtaking as a two D platform. Because I feel like it's a bit, it's a big Nintendo IP, and maybe I'm just expecting too much. But I, Nintendo I do wish don't it had really, a, Nintendo don't yeah, really they, do great art styles anymore, do they? All of their no. games, bar maybe um, Link's Awakening. Well, they look like they were their art style was entirely designed just to get the bloody thing running on a switch. Like that's it. I haven't said that Mercury Steam did the Samus Returns remake, um, and it looked great. And they did the Castlevania one before that. I thought it, it looked, looked awful. Fantastic. Did you think so? <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought um, Samus Returns on 3DS looked awful. I thought a 3DS game, but at the time, Do you know, like those early right, iOS but... games, you know, where it's just like everything's made out of hundred polys, oh, just to fair. run. Yeah, it looked fine. For 3D, yeah, it looked for great. 3DS, so the, the, uh, bear, wait, the Switch was out by then. So I don't know We're talking about like art direction, like Akami looks great, right? That's a great looking game. Link's yes. Awakening looks great. Whereas Wind even Waker. something like, um, uh, uh, um, what's it, Advance Wars, um, I like how they've kind of made it, retrofitted it into a sort of toy box type thing. It, it looks incredibly faithful to the GBA. You can almost put them side by side. But it does look like, again, just a game it that's looks a artistically shit. been yeah. designed to run on a Switch. It, it looks like, I, mean, I don't want to say cool, but it looks like it could be a mobile game, and I'm not trying to be harsh about that, but it, to me it does the fans was. It looks good, don't get me wrong, but the original art style is iconic in my opinion. It looks beautiful. But anyway, this is uh, segues nicely into the biggest disappointment. Uh, we're <laughs> going to go for the negative before we go for the positive. Uh, uh, your biggest disappointment of this E3, uh, Chris, what was it for you? Um, I'm duty bound based on our last podcast now to say Koch Media because the last podcast I spent <laughs> ten, ten minutes hyping it up, saying this is going to be fucking, <laughs> this is going to be decent because we were shown like an hour of footage of games and then they did a two hour presentation with something like eight minutes of gameplay in total and it was literally lengthy Zoom calls with developers about games <laughs> nobody knew anything about and the chat was just savage when you when you watch the, the the chat next to it. It got to the point where, like, kind of funny games, like, were gave up on their live stream and kind of were switching between other things, and then they renamed their video "Don't Watch This" at the end of it. And <laughs> so, like, it's just like it was such a disappointment, considering it's not like they were showing AAA stuff, but they were showing interesting stuff, and this was their first. Um, big attempt to, to launch their new kind of Prime Matter label. And this is them saying, right, we're serious now. We've got really cool, interesting stuff to show you. And the stuff they showed the press before, it was was interesting, not, nothing groundbreaking, but like, okay, there's a game that looks a bit like Returnal and there's an Unreal Engine 5 game, which is quite a cool cutscene. None of it, absolutely none of it. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. like, what what are you doing? What you've, you've, you've absolutely balls that and now everyone associates, a, a lot of people associate Koch and Prime Media, especially in the US where they're not so familiar with them are now th- thinking 
these guys are jokers and it's, it's a massively bad first foot i think brutal but probably fair yourself andy uh my biggest disappointment was e3 oh just in in general now Why? let's let's well summer game fest was was just in terms of substance summer game fest kickoff was significantly better right i mean mm. he had two hours jeff jeff keely had two hours of uh of, of great reveals um and then everything else was uh, you know kind of as he established it was the publishers themselves holding their own shows right you could put them under the summer game fest banner you could put them under the e3 banner ubisoft was great nintendo was great microsoft was great everything that was actually e3 i mean don't get me wrong i i think they they put together um a great production with what they had to work with the 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 kind of the days um of, of streaming schedules um i love a lot of the people that are involved with that and I, I you know i thought they were entertaining but just in terms of substance you know it, i found it a little bit disappointing right like you know i, I think e3 could have done with their own kickoff show and mm. I don't know why they didn't do that because, you know, Jeff Keighley probably would have come to the table and certainly the publishers probably would have come to the table, right? I think you're right. And the thing is of E3, I think this is something that I was I was always toying with writing something about it, but E3 is an event. And Jeff mm. Keighley, uh, to hook off life was a show. And there's a difference. Right? Jeff Keighley puts on a show. He puts on two hours, fully entertaining, knows how to do it. Here's a band, here's a celebrity, here's a famous game person, here's some games, really good, knows how to put it together. E3 makes connections they make things that you can uh, interact with that's what they're good at and what they've tried to do is put on a show but it's not their it's not their forte right and um in the end they've sort of gone to all the publishers to try and help put on the show for them and they just went and did their own shows and just let them run it during it so um i think that's true i think i would love to see from this next year uh, jeff Keeley kick things off the kickoff show and then a load of <laughs> and then a load of publishers go side to side and then e3 put on an amazing like just an event where you can go and hands on and chat and discuss like they normally do, but perhaps a little better. Um, that's what I want to see. I feel I mean, like that, was... that kickoff live show would have been amazing on a big stage, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, no. you, you, you remember like, you know, like GDC, like the GDC awards, they've got this big cavernous hallway for anyone who's never hallway, uh, like um, auditorium type place where they hold the GDC awards. Mm -hmm. um, it's got like, it seems, it feels like thousands of people there. Kick off something like kick off live with a real audience feels really sexy now after we've been in a pandemic for two years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're that, saying Jeff Keighley's cool, right? sexy now? You've been in a pandemic for two years. May <laughs> everyone sexy. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is a really good. Guy. He, he makes good shows. He does good shows. You know, because there's always been a future game show or a PC game show that's similar, but it's just not. I think it's just a really. Yeah. Good and how many how many times did you use the E3 app? The e app was a load of old assholes. I've got. I had a boot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one for the review next year. A load of old assholes. <laughs> Absolute waste of time. I feel sorry for the people. Obviously, when it when it launched, some people were obviously like, "Oh, there's a leaderboard here, and you get prizes for fucking dropping your membership card in each." Uh, I feel sorry for people who must have wasted like ten hours of their life going into every single booth and, that. and drop. Well, no, but there's like there was little leaderboards for awards, and there were some people from like. Uh, different publications, not anyone I'd heard, of, but like they were like top of the leaderboard with like thousands so, of points. Like someone spent a life on this. I'm, 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 I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a, I got a booth as a media partner for the event, and I set one up. And my all I've got is just about a billion emails from people dropping off business cards at my booth, which I haven't looked at. Almost <laughs> all of them from podcasts I've never heard of. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, and it's like oh god, um, but um, yeah, it's really hard doing this digital stuff. It's just yeah, this this doesn't work. <clears throat> But biggest disappointment drinker um zelda um you've not uh, mine you've not mine you've not mine genuinely uh, well, the no, it's it. fine. i'm not oh, maybe maybe the reason's different because i am um, i love the breath of the wild trailer i was really excited you know Same. i thought it was great um i was hoping for some zelda um i was re and I, when i mean some zelda i don't mean a shitty game and watch a piece of hardware that doesn't actually feature the game and watch game in it um <laughs> which i've already uh, pre-ordered <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. i'm getting it <laughs> but the, um, yeah, so we've all pre-ordered it yeah, yeah. we've all pre-ordered the shite i bought i bought the shitty mario one as well and um the um <laughs> uh and i was i just was really looking forward to a bit of a zelda anniversary i was looking forward to buying zelda tat i was looking forward to going back to wind waker i mean i would have been happy if it was just the wind waker and twilight princess game in one mm. and the thing is if breath of the wild 2 was this year i'd have understood it i'd have gone um 
I'd have been like, that's fine. I understand you've got two Zelda games out this year. You don't need to do any more than that. But because it's not, I have no idea why they're not just bundling well, no, that. That's, that's very clear. It's very clear what's happened now, right? Because, um, I mean, I don't want to say, otherwise I'll get the ire of the internet. Um, I mean, obviously, obviously, Breath of the Wild, they're aiming for 2022 is the wording. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't know what the name is. We don't know what the game structure is. We've seen, I mean, how long was that trailer yesterday? 60 seconds? Little longer, um, we've yeah. seen it as you know what a, a tiny snippets of gameplay which we don't really know what it, i mean that is that's the trailer you put out first two years mm -hmm. before the game comes out it's looking it, it's by no means looking certain that game's coming out next year now and nintendo so. has got recent pedigree for sitting on their wii u ports to fill some gaps right mm -hmm. so yeah. i think that's exactly what's happened i i really do i think whatever I, um, whether they had planned for this zelda 35th has been parked just like they did with uh, 3D World, just like they did with Pikmin 3. You know, they were, they were, just they, like they're doing with Metroid Prime Trilogy. They worded, they, right? worded it they worded it cleverly um, during the thing where they basically said, Zelda's 35th anniversary, and although we have no further Switch games planned to celebrate it, here's the game and watch. That doesn't mean they're not coming. That just means they're probably not coming before they're they're but before april no like like what they did with mario the, the 35th anniversary then come april that's the end of it the end i would imagine you, you'll maybe see these hd things that were rumored before after april when, once the 35th anniversary stuff's done next year they'll say actually this new breath of the world is going to take a wee bit longer so here's this to make up for exactly it exactly what i'm expecting i mean no yeah. company has been no platform holder has been disrupted by the pandemic as much as nintendo has yeah uh you know they've been juggling their release schedule for the last 18 months right i mean the the mario remasters which we first reported last march were due to be announced at e3 and they didn't get announced till september yeah. and then they didn't do did, when did they like some of that stuff didn't release until the year like until this year right like for yeah. the world um, I'm sure there might have been some other bits I've forgotten about that, that released this year. Um, yeah. So that's how much that got disrupted. So who bloody knows? I, yeah. I, 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 the reason it was going to be Zelda for me is because um, I'm exactly the same reasons, more or less, but I feel like you could have got away with it if... I don't that Breath of the Wild two trailer. I'm calling that for now. I thought it was good, but I don't. I feel like it still lacked a little bit of pop. And what I mean by that, if there'd been a title, or if there'd been a slightly a little bit more substance to that trailer, and or if there'd been a, a, a more of a firmer release date, I feel like you could have got away with not having those remasters because you would have been a little bit more excited. But as it is, I got the impression from that trailer that as good as he's going to be, which I'm sure it will be, it's a long way away. So I felt like it would have been nice to, to counter that maybe with Wind Waker or something like that. Um, that's why I was at it. I feel like the Zelda section was good, but it could have been a bit more. But they're kind of a victim of their own success because those Breath of the Wild trailers were so incredible that they're never yeah. going to be able they're never going to be able to live up to that. So uh, maybe in, by normal trailer standards, they were okay, but like you, yeah. it just came away like just to, to say something. Oh, it looked brilliant, of course, but just to add something into the mix that's that's perhaps uh, a, a, in, a bit more negative. Aren't we now going for the third generation in a row where their Zelda game that they're working on ends up being so delayed it goes on to the next hardware? Maybe it'll only work it's on Twilight Switch Princess, Pro. Breath maybe of the Wild. That's the plan. And now this oh, one's been in development for what? I mean, could we say maybe five years? It'll be coming mm. five years, yeah. Went gold in Christmas 2016, yeah. Um, well, they've already said they had the ideas before and didn't they? They weren't using that. They were planning to use potentially DLC, but turned to be games. So, so some of these ideas have been in development for ages. And, and the thing mm. is, the thing is for me is that Skyward Sword actually launched in 2011, I think, didn't it? Didn't it? And it was just it was it was just before they launched the Wii U, uh, which I think was. So and actually, and actually, Wii U ended up not having any games for a while, and you end up thinking maybe they should have just put, you know, created a version, you know, spent another year on that and put Skyward yeah. Sword on that, and you could see that would have been different. So if we if we're in a situation again where Super Switch or whatever Switch Two is only a year away, and they're just then that's when uh, Breath of the Wild Two, I think they'd be foolish to actually release. I just it. I just realised I completely discounted the Wii U in my uh, in my <laughs> analogy, which everyone can forgive me for. Yeah, I yeah. just forgot it existed. No, but I, I was agreeing. But I was agreeing with you in a way <laughs> the because they, they didn't do it for the Wii to the Wii U, and I think they should have done on reflection. I'm going to say now you've nabbed Zelda for me. I'm going to say like big Nintendo, but I'm going to call it big Tendo. That's something like the basic. What I mean by that is I there was lots of the little you know things like you know obviously you know um, Advance War, um, Advance Wars, and. Um, WarioWare and so on. Of course, you got Tekken and Smash, and we got the Breath of the Wild. But I, there was quite a few 
things missing that I was hoping for, I guess. And maybe I'm trying to a little be a little bit spoiled here, but you know, no Donkey Kong given the anniversary year. I was maybe expecting for a little bit of support for Animal Crossing, given it was a global sensation. You know, um, I was hoping for a little bit more potentially Breath of the Wild or the Zelda remasters. Potent- not all of these, by the way. One of them, maybe uh, you know, a new 3D Mario game or something like that. You know, uh, because it's been a while since Odyssey now, and no Mario Kart, of course. Pokemon wasn't mentioned. Splatoon wasn't there. So basically, I feel like there was a few titles that maybe one of them could have appeared. So I guess you got a lot of cool stuff in Nintendo, but there was definitely a few um, big hitters, I would say, that were a little bit absent. But it was, it was going to be Zelda for me, but I'm going to go for that, I reckon. Um, yeah. But still, it was a good conference overall. Game of the show, though. Game of the show. Um, Chris Gulliam, game of the show for you. <sighs> we're left wing again here. But this, is, this is legit. I'm not just doing it to be <laughs> controversial. Um, I almost said Forza Horizon 5 because that's my that's my jam, as the kids say. Uh, I love all the Forza games, so I'll definitely be up for that. But the one that surprised me most, we were actually showing a bit of it before E3, uh, the press was shown, is Riders Republic. Like, that just looks fun. That looks class. Me. Yeah, yeah I agree. All, it just, no messing around. Just It just looks like... It just looks mental. I'm, I'm well up for that. It's just like a big giant rocket wingsuits in uh, 60, <laughs> 64 player races and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm sold on that instantly. I'm glad you said that because I, I agree. I thought it looked really, really, really fun. I was a bit pissed when I was watching it, admittedly, but still, <laughs> it, it, it impressed me. So that's all that matters. And I, I can imagine me sat down on a Friday night being a bit pissed and be like, oh, this is class. You yeah. know, so there we go. Um, Andy? I'm going to say Forza. Yeah. Uh, and I think Stop right this, again. This is going last. <laughs> I, I think if this was a traditional show as well, it would have it would have easily won. I think. Um, I, I mean, there's a number of there were probably possibly more exciting games uh, mm. that were shown, but the reason that I picked this one is because it's coming out in what five months, less than that, what four months is it? What October is it? Coming out end of the year, they showed significant amount of playable footage. Mm. You know, it's a prop looks like a proper next gen game. Um, we all know Forza Horizon is fun as hell. Yeah. Um, it just looks great. Mm. It's also hugely popular, that game. Like, you know, it, I think Forza Horizon is Microsoft's, outside of Minecraft, I think Forza Horizon's been Microsoft's biggest brand over the last generation. Mm. And it's um, it's like a Dean Takahashi over at um, Venture Beat did a tweet about how it was a surprise that that game won the E3 game of the show. And I thought, I don't think it was a surprise at all. I think that was, I think it was, Pretty much, it's, it's not only hugely popular. I think it's very good, and it looked amazing. And we saw it. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a yeah. trailer with a snippet of gameplay or no gameplay. We saw it, and I think that looked great. Yeah, I can't believe you stole. It. I guess people <laughs> don't go last ever. Uh, <laughs> Dringo, yourself, what was your game of the show for uh, for E3? Well, for the same reason. So I, I'm like um, Mario and Rabbids got me really. It was the most thing that got me most excited. I was really <laughs> delighted to see that. But um, that's a uh, backup. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm not going to pick it. You can go for it. You can go for it. You can <laughs> this, for this stage, Stephen's game of the show is going to be like Res- Final Fantasy Origin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, terrible, terrible. Chaos. What's left? <laughs> I'm not picking it because um, because I didn't see enough of it. You know, I, to, to, and I yeah. think it's quite a way away. Really, I think it's the, it, you think it'll be towards back in 2022. But. Um, the um the, so for me the game I saw a lot of and I thought all oh, that looked good actually we mentioned it earlier was Metroid Dread I I, I yeah. do love 2D Metroid and when I saw it in action it moves so slick and so fast on um in the treehouse afterwards oddly the trailer was bad like I watched the trailer and I thought oh yeah. and people online were yeah. criticizing all oh, the weird quasi 3D thing doesn't work it's not 3D it's 2D um yeah. it was just the it was just the, just the over focus on the um cutscenes but I thought I love the look of it and it actually. About four, four or five years ago, I went to a, a cabin in the woods, and uh, it was around the time um, Nintendo put those uh, GBA games on um, uh, on the 3DS, and I played Metroid Fusion for the first time. And that's the moment I fell in love with Metroid, and this is the sequel to that. And I am just yeah. like, I'm, I thought it looked great, and uh, and it's probably one of my more anticipated games of the year. Now. Can we can yeah. we go full circle? I know we've already had a whinge about this. Uh, Metroid Fusion's art style was nicer. Uh, yeah, maybe. It's just it's an actual colourful, beautiful game. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it looks nice, but I probably would almost appreciate more of a comic book style presentation. Just just, just, just as a as a kind of as an aside, would did Nintendo World in New York have another screen in this, or did the pandemic spare us the videos that arseholes pointing camera phones at their faces in front of I reckon, <laughs> strong, I reckon he, I reckon it was a week too early because uh, basically <laughs> They've just literally said like yesterday that um, it's now back open to norm, wasn't it, in New York? So I think if it, was this, if it was this week, you would have done that, I reckon. But I reckon they probably just missed that by a few days, unfortunately. Um, That's a shame. 
I was going to say um, the new Rabbids game, but I'm, I, do you know what? I'm going to be, once again, be a little bit left field and say um, replace that. Actually. I thought it looked beautiful. I absolutely love that art style. Um, and to, to be honest, I'm going to say as well, actually, I'm a relative Nintendo and Sony fanboy, always have been. Um, and I, I just for the purpose of nothing, for the Xbox showcase I thought was brilliant. And it's genuinely, I've always been, yeah. I've, I've always intended to get a Series X anyway. It's just been more time and a money thing because life's expensive and all that. But um, that, that honestly, that conference really, really, really convinced me that as soon as I've got a house and got married, I can actually have some spare money afterwards. I'm getting one because I, little things like that, like obviously Replace and you know Somerville and then just Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass every single time during the presentation. I, it was just, it was genuinely impressive. Then Forza as well. And of yeah. course, Riders Republic was impressive. And uh, Redfall, I thought looked really interesting. Interesting. Obviously, Arcane, you know, it's Dishonored and Prey Studio, so it's going to be good. Um, I thought Redfall, it was, it was just a CGI trailer, but the, it was a beautiful CGI trailer, and it was a beautiful world that they seemed to want to create. So, um, so it was going to be Forza, <laughs> it, was, it was going to be Rabbids, and, um, you know, loads of other games, but I'll probably set up for a replace that, even though obviously it wasn't game of the show in many people's eyes. It was uh, beautiful, uh, it was interesting, um, mm-hmm. and I really want to play it. Um, missing in action. So, um, Chris. What was notably missing in action for you? Um, I'm going to be charitable and pass this on to you so that you're not last for once. Hey, hey um, I, <laughs> I've got quite a few. I've actually got like four options here. So, um, But I'm going to go for the big one for me. Was uh, It's broad. It's just Star Wars in general. Because you remember that a lot, of, a lot of the reports about Star Wars handing out its IPs to all these different developers and all that kind of stuff. And I, We're still missing the Star Wars Lego saga, you know, the Lego saga, and that's mm. still not come out as well, you know, and I thought we'd see just a little bit more Star Wars in general. Not that I'm, I'm not even a big Star Wars fan, but I just thought we would see more. I thought we'd see maybe a hint of a, even just a title card for Fallen Order 2 or something like that, you know, given the fact that they've just released the upgrade for the PS5 version or Oh, is it, was it, is it Ubi who's doing the open world Star Wars game? Have I made that up? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And that was obviously yeah, too right. early, but I thought we'd just hear something about Star Wars. But I'm not particularly, I'm not saying gutted by it, but I just I thought there would be a Star Wars presence, really. So that's my um, one. You know what? I, 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 that Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, where was that? That is a good one. I had to read. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Where was that? The, I, the I've good seen fun, that. man. The good fun. They haven't outsourced it to Nintendo of Japan, have they? <laughs> see you in 2027 they used to well. knock out yeah. like three of those a year and i saw that yeah. at e3 2019 and i thought this is really good and it's out this year and it's where is it it's not yeah so we were we went back to the harry potter ones and me and mrs during the lockdown she thought it's not it's better than i remember it being it's like it's obviously simple great, fun but i stand yeah, by they're, lego, they're lego fun, diamond man. is one of the best things ever made stand by it r.i.p wonderful games might be well, they're not wonderful games, but the fun games, and sometimes that's all you need. Uh, so that was my, I'd say, general, broadly speaking. I had a few other options, but I, I'll go back to them at the end. But yeah, Star Wars is what I would say. What about yourself, Chris? Um, Bayonetta, no Bayonetta three. Um, yep, it's like, again. and it's like, where is it? Come on, what's going on? <laughs> so when I get, I get these things take a while to make, but that was a long. I reckon, time I reckon, they, I reckon they've rebooted it. Yeah, they have to. I reckon they have. um, Um, You know, like I I speak to Platinum quite a bit, right? Um, And when I went to speak to them in, I want to say, start of 2019, before we launched VGC, um, they were hinting a lot about how it was had an open structure, like much more open structure, maybe an open world. Um, You know, every time they're just bored of answering now. Whenever I mean, I've interviewed them several times since, and when you ask about it, they're sort of like, you know, ask Nintendo has nothing to do with us. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, but it, it kind of does suggest that they, they might be kind of working it out, right? My concern with that, and this is speculation, is that obviously they're working on an original IP, um, a Project Project GG, which is a Camille's game. Mm-hmm. And the thing you notice with Platinum is that they're very spiky, aren't they, with quality? Like they put out something great, and then they have their B team do like a Transformers game or something. And then they, I do wonder if they've put all of the, the, the A team onto the original IP, which is in their interest because they own it, they're self publishing it. It's a big thing for their the company, yeah. for a company that spent the last more, their first their existence, their first decade, um, creating games for, for like critically acclaimed games for other publishers that they don't own. It's a big thing for them, that um, Project GG. So my concern is that have they necessarily got their best talent working on Bayonetta 3? And that's that's unwarranted speculation. It's probably a bit unfair as well. But they do have form for that, right, of putting out a stinker and then putting out a good game, especially now Ashel Chain. They've got a couple of games that you probably think, 
might go above Bayonetta on the priority list. Astral Chains sold a million, was great. Did well. Um, you know, Tora, Tora's um, uh, first uh, directing directing seat game. So you'd think that, you know, that guy is probably maybe working on a sequel. Um, and um, what's it? Is it Automata? Is it near? It's near Automata, isn't it? I always confuse yeah. near with Neo. Yeah, um, near Automata, which sold like was one of the their best selling games with Square. You got to think that that's up the list. Mm-hmm. So who's working on Batman? When I asked them, I asked them explicitly a while ago, like who's directing this game? They wouldn't tell me. So that's that's my concern. But yeah. again, it's complete speculation and perhaps a bit unfair. Andy, you're missing an action game. Uh, Sony. <laughs> Sony. Yeah. Sony missing it. I, I just don't. I mean, Dringo's going to completely shoot me down now, but I just don't think their their presence, their lack uh, of presence at E three is is necessarily warranted now i mean it made sense in 2019 when they were just finishing up the generation it was too early to show ps5 stuff they had nothing left to show on ps4 um i think e3 is is really important and useful for putting a spotlight on the games industry and it's they're 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 missed right they are sorely missed and and having them a part of this weekend would have been fantastic for games as a whole for attention on all games and i'm sure they would have shown a lot of really exciting stuff so well, I, hope, I hope they for, come back. What would have been enough for you for, for a good TV show, E3 show for Sony, just to, you know, to tick the boxes? Like, would there be certain games you'd expect there? Obviously, Deathloop, Horizon. Um... Well, I mean, they announced what they announced, uh, Death Stranding, right? Did they have any of enough stuff yeah. this weekend? They had some um, new game. studio. Yeah, that. You know, so they had yeah. little things. I mean, they showed Horizon before E3. So that's yeah. already a good foundation for a show. I mean, they could yeah. have announced some stuff that's further along. You know, it's show just when you when you when you've got a year where Xbox just brought it and and basically answered all the criticisms people have of it, where's their exclusives? Well, here they are, um, and stuff like that. Then suddenly they have an answer now, and yeah. it would have been Sony's turn to kind of step up and say, okay, well here's our counter argument, and there's nothing. Instead, the only takeaway you get is was it someone said Godfall is coming to PS4, and that's like that's the takeaway <laughs> is that another PS5 exclusive is going down to PS4, and it's like. We, we, was that your it's, parenting it's... alarm, Andy, by any chance? It was. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, Andy's got a shoot soon to be a good parent and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get on to um, Dringo's Missing an Action Game. I we'll actually don't really, I don't, I, I don't really have one. Um, I, okay. I agree, by the way, with Andy saying about Sony. I do think Sony not being at E3 is, I, I want them there. I want them there. I want them to, be, to compare them. I want to talk about them. And they're not okay. there. I think they'll be here next week or the week after. I think we'll see them soon. But it's just, I think it's a shame they weren't part of this. Um, I actually don't, um, Star Wars is a good call. I think Hellblade 2, I was expecting that. I didn't, I thought that game was relatively close. I didn't, I think it's going to be in the showcase later in the week. So, um, but generally speaking, E3 did not, I was not a thing that Beyond Good and Evil 2 and all the stuff that wasn't there. I expected yeah, yeah. not to be there. I didn't expect to Vowed or Fable or Perfect Dark. I didn't expect yeah. Metroid Prime 4. I didn't get them. I wasn't expecting them. And um, so I wasn't, I didn't notice anything missing. Although when you said Lego Star Wars, really good shout. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I, I, well, well, for me, Switch Pro as well. You know that that was surely a big missing in action kind of thing, and maybe just Rockstar's general presence. You know, like um, you know, there. I would probably they never. They never. There. I, I guess maybe I was thinking you we were going to see the first kind of look at you know the GTA Five remaster for. Is it com- I, maybe I'm wrong here? Is it coming to Series X? Coming at the end of the year, like, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it, is, yeah. yeah. it might have been there playable. if Sony were there. But they yeah, maybe. <clears throat> yeah. Um, overall, quickly, just before Andy shoots off to pick up the kids and all that, uh, good E3 show for you, Chris. Was it decent? It was okay. Um, in in terms of the, the obviously the Xbox nailed it, Nintendo nailed it, uh, Ubisoft nailed it to an extent. But so there, there's extreme highs and extreme lows. Coach was disappointing. Gearbox was a cringe to watch. Um, Capcom <laughs> delivered nothing. Uh, Screen Enix Square. was okay. Um, uh, Bandai, Bandai Namco was, Bandai one Namco was like one <laughs> game, so it was like extreme highs. It's it interesting to see how each company has handled the the kind of the pandemic and and and, and how it's how it's affected their output. But um, yeah, there's, there's clearly a lot of a lot of extreme I think highs. Up the I think it was a better than we thought it was going to be. I, I, think, I, I, think, also, you, I think you're safe. I think you were I think, safe. I think Xbox smashed it. Like they yeah, just same. Yeah, they just really smashed it. Uh, they are easy winners of E3, yeah. um, and it was. Um, and I loved the fact they ended on a new IP. I thought that was really, you know, same. they could have ended, they could have ended on Halo yeah. or Forza or even Starfield, and they ended on. Uh, I mean, it was a CG trailer; didn't tell us anything, and it's an arcane game, so no one's going to buy it. But I did think it was. Uh, I did think it was fascinating. <laughs> 
that uh, that they ended on that, I thought it was just a very oh, we're gonna give, we're gonna show you something completely different because we've just knocked out the park. All, all. And no, I, I, that, I, I can't Avery, think of I anything I would like Arcane to work on less than a bloody co-op multiplayer thing and single player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, right. no, I think I think you're right. By the way, about Redfall, I think they made that conversation. I think the I think the attempt to give it to put it as a big new IP at the end of the show, I thought it was important uh, because otherwise it, it can disappear in the middle. And I think the, it, everyone everyone noticed Redfall because it was at the end of a, a great conference, and I thought it was a really good decision. Guys, that is our review of VGC's uh, E3 coverage. But no, that's not our review. That doesn't make any sense. That was our E3 <laughs> verdict over on VGC off the record. We're gonna let Andy go and pick up the kids and be a good dad and all that kind of stuff. Do you let us know down in the comments on the YouTube? video your most surprising reveal your biggest disappointment the game of the show and what was missing in action for you i thought it was pretty good i enjoyed e3 this year it was good to be making videos as well during it for the first time as well but on a personal level thank you so much for watching or listening over on the podcast providers hit that subscribe button or give the podcast a follow and have a wonderful it's not a weekend actually it's wednesday we'll have a wonderful week and then have a wonderful weekend see you later guys